It took me 87 days to fight for the right to bury my husband, Donatian. I was born on 20th October 1949. After primary education in 1968 to 1969, I joined Dwika Teachers Training College where I graduated as a teacher. I was employed as a teacher in December of 1969 at Bagamoyo District in Coast Region. I met my husband at Bagamoyo district and thereafter on 19th December of 1971 we got married. God blessed us with seven daughters. We led a very good life with my husband. After a while, his relatives started constantly asking my husband why he only has daughters and that it would be better if he got married to another woman. Hence, my marriage started to face problems. I was hated by my brothers-in-laws, mother-in-law and all his relatives. My mother-in-law, sisters-in-law and other older brothers-in-laws strongly supported the idea of my husband becoming a polygamist. My husband never had a problem with daughters. Before his death, he had provided us with a verbal will for each of his daughters and me their mother. Some of the community members even advised me to stop working so that I could stay with my mother-in-law since the family regarded me as worthless for bearing female children only. In 1982, the family chased me away from my home. In June 1986, I went to my husband to beg for pardon and reconciliation so that we could start afresh and live together again. He agreed and I returned home. My husband started suffering from diabetes in the year 1984 when he was in Dar es Salaam. My life consisted of looking after him in his ill health up to July 7th, 2003, when he passed away. To speak the truth, I loved my husband, and I took care of him with all my heart because I loved him. I took care of my husband for 19 years when he was suffering from diabetes. The little that I have is for bringing up my children and to continue taking care of my husband's grief until my dying day. Immediately after the death of my husband, problems showed up very clearly that they wanted to take over the burying of my husband and they wanted to take all the properties he had. On the day of the burial, they refused to give me the body of my husband. 
baada watu wote walikuja waliokuwa wamekuja kwenye mazishi after all the people had come for the burial ceremony at home baadaye ndugu yangu ambaye ni mdogo wangu wa kiume afterwards my relative who is my younger brother together with another friend of mine encourage me to go ahead and fight for the legal right of burying my husband amani kutafuta haki ya kisheria kwamba ni nani mwenye haki ya kumzika mme wangu nilikuwa na mahakama ya mwanzo I went to the primary court to file my case asking the permission to bury my husband. Kwa adili ya kutoa ruhusa ya kumzika mme wangu. When I heard that my sister will not be able to bury her husband and that she could not inherit the properties which they earned together during their married life, I felt very bad. Therefore, I advised her to hire an advocate who would assist her to fight for her rights. According to the tradition of my sisters in laws they insist that if a woman does not have a son, she cannot inherit the husband's properties and she cannot even stay in their home after the death of her husband. She does not have a son. If she had a son, he would be allowed to inherit their properties and she would be allowed to stay in their home. Every time I went to court, my relatives, my brothers and their children, sisters-in-law and my friends, especially those I pray with, escorted me to the court. And at the same time, those who opposed me were coming to court too. The minority were those who supported me. We were about five to six people only on my side going to court. For sure, during the period of this case at the court, it was a very hard time for me and my children. For we were much worried that we could be attacked on the way back home or even get burnt in this house. This incident of the death of my husband and all the problems which followed hurt my children very much. Not only one, but all my children were affected so much that they have despaired with life. After all I'd gone through, I decided first thing to keep quiet. My quietness helped a lot. Secondly, I refused to communicate with anybody who was against me. And then thirdly, I remained on my knees praying to God. Mama Lucretia, I have known Lady Lucretia for 15 years. Truthfully, at the end of this case, I changed, and I discovered that I could become very close to my wife on my business, and she becomes the heir of my wealth, which I'm earning now. I have written in my will that she will be the first person to inherit the properties which I possess. This case of mine, of having a case in the court of law and struggling for the right to bury my husband, has become an open door for the rights of women in the society of Tanzania and even outside Tanzania. Because I have female children only, I want to educate all my daughters.
For example, today, I have one of my daughters at the university and another one is sitting for A level. Na mwingine ambaye anatakiwa kwenda kwenye A level. I want them to continue getting good education, which will enable them sustain themselves in the future and not to face the problems which I encountered personally in my life. I would like to see my children in their married lives, being able to fight for their rights as women. I have also advised them that when they find a husband, they should come to an agreement about their future marriage life and put them in writing. They should be able to explain clearly that I found this girl, I love her, and our decision in life is one, two, three, four, five. And by doing so, they will show clearly that they were born by a woman who was fighting for women's rights. Kwa heri.